Thank you. Well, our portion this week is Nasso, and it's really a continuation of Bamita with counting the people, but more with telling the priests how they should impart God's words, God's blessing and laws to us. As you know, before the temples were destroyed, we did have priests and they did intercede on our behalf between us and Hashem. I, I cannot get over how our history shows us that through what is considered and outside the Shoah probably is the greatest tragedy for the Jewish people was the destruction of both temples. And yet, as I always say, and this gives me such faith in Hashem and in humanity, that in every great adversity lies a seed of some future greatness that we can achieve. So what happened after the destruction of the temples when we didn't have a, priest, a priestly uh, uh, contingent to intercede for us or on our behalf? Very simply, Hashem had already prepared us for this. Already he had instructed Moses that, th that we would be and will be a nation of priests. And in this way, we laid the foundation for democracy for the entire Western world. So it's, it's, it's really of such great pride and joy that out of that tragedy, every one of us can go directly to Hashem. But tonight, researching for this parasha, and I must tell you that I research all streams of Judaism, there seemed to be emphasis on three issues, two of which I've left for tomorrow because they're the problematic ones. But the three issues that most rabbinical sources or sages or commentators or educators, and I merely fit into the level of a commentator, most sages have, have emphasized these three. And now, Marion, you'll be, you'll, know why I wanted to know what page was our priestly blessing because this is where the priestly blessing comes in that actually God instructs the priests to bless the people of Israel. Also tomorrow we'll be discussing two issues that are really concerned rabbinical thought. The one is how a woman who is considered being adulterous to her husband is treated. That's a very controversial one. And a very interesting one is where the Nazarite, that strange sect of Jews who were not priests, what were they, where did they fit in? But let's get back to the, to the, the to me, the most joyous discussion, which is in this portion we hear the priestly blessing. And Marion, I was surprised that the English translation here is again different from ours. But could you turn to page 121 and just read it for us in Hebrew, not the English, just the Hebrew. And I will then read the English. Is Marion there? No? I don't think so. Wow, Marion, you've deserted us during my drosha. Jacob, will you read it for me, please? On no, 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 I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Good, okay, my love. Yeah, I'm here. Page I'm 121. Here. Sorry, I just... Yeah, okay. I'm here. Good. Sorry, I just like, was caught unaware, so my, my mouse was like all over the show. <laughs> I know that feeling <laughs> very well. Where am I now? 120. You read Hebrew so beautifully. I'd like to hear the Hebrew words Thank from you, you, please. Thank you, Reva. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was caught unaware. Not at all. So. Just the Hebrew. Ve'yevarecha Adonai v'shima v'shim arecha. Ve'er Adonai penav elecha. 
Vichuneka, Nisha Adonai Penav Elecha, Ve Yasim Lechai Shalom. Thank you, Marian. That was that was beautiful. Now, Marian reminded me once we got back into the Shalom Shabbat mornings of the years she and I did services together after Brian and Serona stopped that, then Marian and I took on and learned a lot from them both. But she reminded me of the years of Shabbat mornings that we concluded with that blessing. No one told us to. I don't know why we did. But it was so beautiful that we already brought it back into our Shabbat mornings in the shul. So the actual translation, Marion, and I'm reading from you a very now um, sort of little translation, and there are many, but it says the same thing. And it says, may God bless you and protect you. May God deal kindly and graciously with you. May God bestow favor upon you and grant you peace. And our words are very much the same. And, and this is really beautiful. And it's been pointed out that what I read, each line goes a little bit longer than the previous one. And the longest one is, may God bestow favor and grant you peace. And it's almost like a nikon. It's almost like a song. It starts and the next line is longer and the next line is, is longer. But something I discovered, very interesting. There is another line which Marion is not in our siddur, and which people don't usually even include in the priestly blessing. And, se and several rabbis have brought this into their um, thinking and thoughts from all streams. And I'm going to read to you the next line, which is left out, not in, only in our siddur, but in most priestly blessings. And this is it. So I'm going to read it all again, and then I'm going to put in the line that is left out. May God bless you and protect you. May God deal kindly and graciously with you. May God bestow favor upon you and grant you peace. And they shall set my name over the Israelites, and I myself shall bless them. That is God talking. So I was very curious that they had left this line out. Of course, in those days, the priests were God's helpers and enabled God's holiness to reach to individual people such as ourselves. But, and do you know what the priests were called? Who, remember, in those days, we didn't go directly to Hashem like now. We still had uh, the Mishkan and the temples. And the priests were called clay Kodesh. In other words, they were seen by Hashem as vessels of holiness, as vessels from which holiness could pour forth to the people that they were blessing from Hashem. Now, today, of course, we are each a priest. There are no more priests. As an unbelievable true democratic dispensation religion where every individual is seen equal, we are all that sacred vessel. Hence, Marion and I, on a Shabbat morning, can use that blessing. But here's the big secret, so can each and every one of you. When you want to bless someone, when you want to bring joy and Hashem and goodness into someone's life, you are part of the priestly nation of Judaism. You can say this beautiful blessing and ask God to protect, deal graciously with, and grant peace to the one you love. The line that is not in our siddur, and they shall set my name over the Israelites, and I myself bless them. There's been some discussion amongst the sages, what does this really mean? Was Hashem saying that he would bless the priests or was he saying he would bless the whole nation of Israel and they shall set my name over the Israelites 
and I myself shall bless them. Well, of course, true to our Jewish tradition, which is true to our tradition, but very sadly, in reality, very few Jewish organizations, very few, few Jewish committees, very few Jews politically in the world use the paradigm that we always, I as a progressive Jew, promote. And that is, two great sages gave two different answers. Was God telling us that he would bless the priests? Or was God saying, I'm going to bless every single person in the nation of Israel? Well, we'll go back to our usual with Shammai and Hillel. As you know, they never agreed on anything. And what did the great Sanhedrin say? They were both right. And so in this case, is the same and this time it was by let me just find where i made my notes it, it was by a wonderful sage uh let me just see here if i can find yeah it was by ibn ezra he was a commentator sorry in the middle ages not a sage or a priest and he reconciles both of these in the this is the true Jewish tradition it is not the tradition to say your opinion is one way mine is another split the congregation split the community split Israel split everything our family into two camps because two people have a different uh, position on it and, and this is what Ibn Ezra says he said with any of us when any of us offer these sacred words from the Torah, we are enabling God's blessing for someone else and receiving God's blessing ourselves. And he said, therefore, in his opinion, yes, God in one way meant the priest and in another way meant each human being, each person, when the priests were no longer to be there. And I thought, yes, here is a commentator in the Middle Ages, Ibn Ezra, following the true Jewish tradition, the true tradition to bring peace and not division and not argument and not conflict. However, as we all know, provided both sides, both opinions are for the sake of heaven. In this case, whether God is blessing the priests for blessing other people or whether God was saying I'm going to bless each and every person in my nation perhaps in the world who blesses others and who brings peace to others both those arguments are for the sake of heaven of course if one side is not for the sake of heaven but for a person's ego or a one organization's dominance over another this doesn't apply so, as we said, this is what I believe the true Jewish tradition. And this is really just my message to you this evening. To say any of us can offer these sacred words of Torah. We are both enabling God's blessing for the person we are blessing. And by being a sacred vessel, a sacred vessel as the priest used to be, a clay Kodesh. Each of us can be a clay Kodesh. And when we become a sacred vessel, offering blessings to someone else, not only does Hashem's blessings go on the person we're blessing, but we bring Hashem's blessings to ourselves. So with those words, I'd like to just encourage us as Marion and I did rather, Marion, I don't know why we did it all those years. No one told us to. But I would encourage each and every one on this Kabbalah show, service with us this evening. Don't keep these blessings only for parents or for, or for guardians or children. In fact, one person even suggested 
that there should be a blessing that we change a little bit for children to give parents on a Friday night. God's laws are not rigid. They're expansive. They're inclusive. They want us. Hashem wants us through these beautiful prayers to reach as many hearts, souls, and minds as we can. So may I encourage you at any opportunity to use this beautiful blessing. And may I just conclude with the words, may God bless you and protect you. May God deal kindly with you and graciously with you. May God bestow favor upon you and grant you peace. And may each person in this Kabbalat Shabbat Zoom service with us be that clay Kodesh, that holy vessel that in turn will use this blessing in Hebrew, in English, in whatever language you choose to bless another so you too will be blessed in abundance. Shabbat Shalom.